Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and lately quite a few people have been shocked to know that I have been doing just one set of all of my basic exercises. When I've been posting up training videos, people have noticed the strength gains, they've noticed quite a bit of progress over the last few months. Uh, I, my arms and everything look bigger. Uh, all around I've made progress, gains have got bigger, gotten stronger, and I'm only doing one set of each exercise. A lot of people are shocked by that, but they really shouldn't be, and I guess it's people who are pretty new to the iron game who are shocked by that, because that has been one of the biggest debates. I have observed over the years, you guys got to remember I'm 39 years old, I've been around the whole training community a long time. Whether you need to do one set with just really high intensity workload to failure, near failure, extended sets, things like that, or if you need to do high volume, which one produces the best results overall has been one of the biggest debates in the iron game for the past 30 something years. And it goes back and forth. The trends go back and forth. In my own lifetime, I've seen the trend go in the direction that I'm talking about among the elite bodybuilders and physique artists and people like that. I'm not just talking about uh, regular gym rats. I'm talking about uh, what gets promoted by the best bodybuilders in the world for hypertrophy. This, we don't need to get into sports performance, just hypertrophy, which is something the fitness community focuses a lot on. In my lifetime, Dorian Yates has been the top bodybuilder. In my adult life, the top bodybuilder in the world, the biggest guy out there uh, up on a bodybuilding stage, and he promoted one set. Mike Menzer started it back in the day. I've also noted that Dante Trudel took the internet by storm because things started going back towards high volume again. And early on when I got into all this, Dante Trudel came out with his article called Cycling for Pennies. And in his uh, article of later called dog crap training because that was the name he posted on the internet as he promoted doing one set per exercise uh, around twice a week for any given muscle group or whether it's the compound or the isolations you're picking for but one real work set and uh, obviously doing rest pause training and extended sets was his uh, credo for it but that became extremely popular so about 15 years ago there were tons of guys on the internet training that way getting amazing results and it goes back and forth in waves and people have only been following this about five or six years probably think the high volume approach that they're seeing currently being the biggest trend on YouTube and forums is the way it's always been. No, guys, it's gone back and forth, back and forth. So what I'm doing isn't anything unusual or, or anything else. In fact, it'll probably be the way the trend goes back in the next few years because I've watched it swing on a pendulum repeatedly. About every 10 years, the, the one set type thing becomes a dominant thing in the training community that the majority of the guys will then be doing who are successful for several years and then it will go back to real high volume training back and forth depending on what the magazines and things are promoting at the time. So this is not unusual guys and you need to remember is that there is no one right way to train. The people who oftentimes say these things they promote that as the best way but you know what? People have gotten results on both ends of the spectrum. People have become the best in the world on both ends of the spectrum. People have become the biggest guys out there on both ends of the spectrum. So you've got to remember, you've had everyone from Mike Menzer before that promoting this, who, again, I think he took second place in the Mr. Olympia at one time, to Dorian Yates, who is arguably one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, to Dante Trudel, and you've even seen guys like Martin Burkholm kind of push this back into the mainstream a little bit again with his reverse pyramid style training, which is almost a, a one set type protocol, but it was still minimalist. And so it's nothing unusual, guys. This is just what I prefer to do. It's what I like to do. And it's what I'm doing. And it's also a good way to look at things because not everyone wants to spend all their time in the gym. That's the thing that you're seeing pushed right now on YouTube really hard is just do whatever it takes, do whatever it takes, get in the gym for hours and hours every day, five days a week, six days a week, whatever it takes. But you know what? Not everyone is interested in doing that. Not everyone is obsessed with spending their entire life in the gym. Some people want to be efficient with it. And the fact of the matter is there have been guys who have built monstrous, absolutely monstrous levels of muscle mass and monstrous physiques who spend less than two hours a week lifting weights, spend less than two hours a week in the weight room, some as little as an hour. So put that into perspective. Don't assume there's just one right way to do things. Now, if you're going to do it that way, they can't come in and lift lightweight. They can't come in and be lazy. They can't come in and, and uh, play around while they're doing that because they're very, very efficient with their time. But it can be done. And the thing to remember is that uh, YouTube fitness has been mostly geared towards 
single young men who don't necessarily have full-time careers, full-time families, things like that. Guys who are single or maybe they're just in college and they don't work or they just work a regular 40-hour week job. They're still single. They don't have other responsibilities, don't work overtime. That is the biggest demographic and audience that's out there. So when you put that in perspective, it makes sense that you could take all their pent up energy and just put them in the gym all the time and tell them that's the way to go. But as soon as those guys get lives of any type, uh, they get involved in a relationship, they get married, they have kids, they get a career. If they want to keep their gains, they're not going to have time to be married to the gym the way a lot of the people are promoting that they do. And once that happens, they're going to have to find alternative approaches if they want to continue to not only keep what they have, but to make further gains. And that's why it becomes important to address this other end of the pendulum, because it might be that those people love the gym, but they may not have, want to spend the eight to 10 hours a week of their free time every week, uh, beating it out in the gym. If they have an alternative, they could spend as little as an hour and a half a week in the gym lifting weights and still get all of the size that they got off the higher volume approaches if that's what they choose to do instead. It's just a matter of personal preference. And so when I'm coming in uh, talking about doing one set or I'm doing just one set myself, I'm not telling you that this is the right way to do it. This is the only way to do it because it clearly isn't. Absolutely is not. It's presenting an alternative. It's saying, no, there's more than one way to do this, and uh, plenty of champions have done it on both extremes and everything in between. But you don't have to do it any one way. This can be done multiple ways. And as much as many of you guys might have the time and the, the zeal for the gym right now, you may not always find yourself in that situation. And when you start having less free time and more responsibilities, if you still want to make progress and uh, not spend all of the free time that you have in the gym instead of doing other things that you might want to enjoy, then you're going to have to find an alternative. You're going to have to find ways to be really, really efficient in the gym. You're not going to have a lot of time to do that. And uh, I did reach points in my own life where I had to do that, and I wanted to maintain my gains when I was much younger, and I found that I didn't have time to spend an hour a day in the gym, and I cut it down to 20 minutes. And you know what, guys? I was able to maintain through my uh, late 20s, right around 30 years old, when I found myself in that sort of situation, I found that I could be in and out of the gym in 20 minutes and I could still bench press 400 pounds. I could still squat 550 while doing that for three years. I never was in the gym more than 30 minutes at a time. And that's okay, guys, because the thing is, you don't need to be dogmatic about this. There's no need for us to come in and say, hey, we have to train this way or that way. If you love being in the gym and you're single, you don't work more than 40 hours a week, or you just go to school and you want to spend your extra time lifting weights and that's what you enjoy doing and you're making progress doing it, by all means, keep knocking it out. If you don't have the time to do that or you don't enjoy doing it that way for whatever reason, there's the other end of the spectrum and you can make just as good a progress on the other end of the spectrum and be in and out of the gym in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe not even be in the gym more than three or four days a week and you can still make the same progress are you going to have to train a bit harder during that window? Yes, it is going to have to be a little harder, a little more intense, a little heavier. You're going to have to really dig in sometimes to complete sets with really good form because you're not going to have any uh, effort to waste. You're not going to have room to pick shitty exercises. You're not going to have uh, room to pick inefficient movements or not train full range of motion or any of that stuff if you do it that way. But if you're efficient with it and you train hard you'll get just as good of progress doing it that way it just comes down to what your priorities are and how you want to spend your time and how you want to go about doing things all i'm trying to do when i'm training this way because that's how i feel like training these days i don't like spending hours now at the, at the gym that takes away uh, time i could be spending with my girl that takes away time i could be spending doing cardio that takes away time i could be spending doing other things that I love and enjoy. So at the end of the day, for me, I just don't see the point in being in the gym longer than that when I know that it is physically possible for me to reach my goals uh, doing so with just one set. As long as I have a good overlap of exercises, nothing's getting missed, doing a little extra work for my weak points, which has actually been working for bringing up my arms and things, which people are noticing. And uh, the same can apply to all of you guys. So it comes down to really just a matter of how you want to spend your time, how you want to train, what you want to do. 
there's no reason to be dogmatic about any of this. You have a lot of options available in doing it. this higher intensity style training with just one set is just one of the tools you have available in your toolbox. And if you don't like that, hey, you can go back to doing the high volume training. It's just nice to have options. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. If you guys like this video, you like my work in general, please remember to click like down below. If you do so, it is so appreciated. Please subscribe if you haven't and share this video with others. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.